thank you for doing great things in our lives and changing us to serve you in your kingdom. Amen. Amen. Please take a seat as we come to the of confession. Because we recognize that Jesus does great things. God did the greatest thing by sending his son to death and alive again to save us from our sins, from the things that we separate us from the love of others and the love of God. And as we come every week to say sorry, to receive that forgiveness, we take a moment of silence to say sorry to God now.
reading is taken from John chapter 11, verses 17 to 27. On his arrival, Jesus found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem, and many had come to, to, come to Martha and Mary to comfort them in their loss of their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, but Mary stayed at home. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now, God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live, even though they die. And whoever lives by, by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she replied. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, who is come into the world. This is the word of the Lord. Moses is there in his doubts, his worries, 
is questioning, questioning his callings, questioning his life, questioning what God is saying to him, and God speaks. And this is what we hear. God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, say to the Israelites, the Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, has sent me to you. This is my name forever. The name you, call, you shall call me from generation to generation. And so if we start at the very beginning, we can understand what the significance of Jesus saying, I am the resurrection of the life. I am the bread of life. Because what he is doing is revealing himself as God to the people who are hearing. And all through the summer, what we need to remember is Jesus was saying, I am God. I am God's son. I am his messenger on earth. It was revelationary. He was saying, I am the Messiah. I am the one that you are known and waiting for. This is my name forever. The name you shall call me from generation to generation. The God of the fathers, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God of Moses. I am. And so when Jesus says, I am, he is revealing himself as God the Messiah, as the one, as the Trinity. And so we have to remember that, that every time that Jesus was saying, I am, he is saying, I am God. And so we come to this morning's encounter. And I don't know if you sort of recognize anything in this morning's encounter and in Moses' encounter. Because in Moses' encounter, Moses had murdered someone, he was exiled, he didn't feel worthy, and he came, and God called him in that brokenness, in that disturbance. And so we then meet a woman who is upset, broken, hearted, grieving, and God speaks through his son to say, I am. Right from the very beginning to now, I am. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. And Martha answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection of the last day. And Jesus said to her, I am. I am God. Just like God said to Moses, I am. And Jesus said, I am. The resurrection and the life. No one who believes in me shall come. I will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord. Moses had faith to step out and follow God. Martha has faith when she said, Yes, Lord, I believe you are the Son. I believe you are the I am, the Son of God who has come into this world. And I want to open up a couple of thoughts this morning around what it is to be believing and trusting in and around the resurrection. And the second thought I want to uh, bring up. Uh, sorry, the first thought is believing and trusting. The second thought is the difference between resuscitation and resurrection. We need to make a distinction in today's story. The distinction is between belief and faith. Jesus said to Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives in me believes in me will never die. Do you believe in and Martha said to him, yes. Barbara Taylor, Barbara Taylor Brown suggests that the important word in these sentences is not resurrection or life, but the word belief. The original Greek word, hysteria, uh, which can be interpreted as either believe or trust. So in simple terms, believing is something we do with our heads and trusting is something resurrection and the life. Those who trust in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and trusts in me will never die. Do you trust this? I 
Martha said to him, Yes, Lord, I trust. Belief with head, trust with heart. And so we open up the question, do we trust? Not do we believe, but do we trust? Do like Martha and like Moses, because Moses trusted God that he would be with him. Do we trust with our whole hearts that Jesus is the Lord? Jesus is the Messiah. And it opens up because if we trust, then we must die. Our lives must die and we must have eternal life through Jesus because we trust in him. And that leads us to the next law, whether it's resuscitation or resurrection. Resuscitation we know, refers to reviving the old life. If someone is resuscitated, they come back to life. But they have two choices when they're resuscitated, when they die. They can live the life that they used to live, or they can live a new life. And how many testimonies do you hear about people who have been resuscitated by the ambulance or the heart who then go on to live a new life? They may fundraise or they may uh, make sure that there are defects in every place because that's what saved their lives. They live a new life because they don't go back to the same way because they know the same way led to their heart attack. And so they become resurrected. And if we are to be resurrected, then we have to start a new life, a new life in Christ. We have to not be resuscitated into our old life, we have to be resurrected into a new life. And if we trust and truly trust Jesus is Messiah, God is King of our life, then we are resuscitated, we are resurrected into the new life, not resuscitated the way that we used to live. And that's the difference, the distinction. If you read this story as Jesus saying, I am the Reverend, I am God, I am the Messiah. And Martha is saying, I believe that. I know that you are the Son of God who came into the whole world. We hear that she is resurrected just like her brother was. As he was resurrected, so was she. And how we read this story makes the difference to us. If we read this story as resuscitation, then we will only trust God for our lives. But if we read this about resurrection, we will trust God with our lives. And so, having thought about that idea of trusting, Believing around resuscitation and resurrection. We need to make a distinction between belief and faith. Jesus said to Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even though they die, will live, and everyone who lives in me will never die. So, yes, we believe. Yes, we will. And I'm going to read the same thing because my. Uh, my iPad's gone back up again. Um, so, let <laughs> me just catch to where I am. Um, sorry. Uh, resurrection is in, is, sorry, let's start that again. How we read this story makes a difference. If we read this story about being resuscitation, we will only trust God with animals. And if we read it as being about resurrection, we trust God. Resurrection is into something new. I am the resurrection and the life. Resurrection is into that new thing. For those who Jesus healed and brought back to life, they didn't have that same life. They couldn't live the same life again because they knew that they were healed and everyone knew that they would either be 
and brought up from the dead or healed and everyone wanted to see and touch and know them. And having life, being resurrected into life and having life to the full and new life in Jesus is when we say yes. We have that new life that Jesus gives us. I am the resurrection from the old to the new and I am the life into a new life, a new way of being. And that's the same for us. When we say yes to being resurrected in Jesus, we say yes to having a new life with Jesus. But not just an, an alone life, a personal life with Jesus, yes that is correct, but we have a life in community with Jesus. We have our own personal faith, but we become part of the community with Jesus in the Trinity, but also in community. A full life is a life, uh, a new life is a life that is full, but it is one that is supported by the church, by other Christians. It's not just a personal faith, but it's a community faith with other Christians, worldwide and local. Those who share in a life of faith and those who want you to thrive in that life of faith. When we have that new life, we are surrounded by others who are willing us and supporting us on in the way of life. That is what church is. That's what we are here on a Sunday to do. To support each other and help each other in that new life of faith. In that new resurrection. To help us on the journey and the walk where we find it difficult. And you see, when we believe that Jesus is the I am, the God, Trinity, the Messiah in our lives, and we believe that we have life and life everlasting because we know it's not just now, it's when we die, we go to heaven and are resurrected with the saints as we have sung already. We go into that new life. That new life starts the moment we say yes to Jesus, or when we realize that we actually truly believe we have resurrection, not resuscitation. Because we are changed by that encounter with Jesus, with the I Am, like Moses, like Mary and Martha, to have a deep faith throughout our life. And of course, we have little bits of resurrection all through our lives, whether it's a new understanding of the Bible or whether it's a new understanding of faith as Jesus turns up in the most unexpected places during the hardest parts of our lives. That's resurrection and life. A life surrounded by the people of life. A community giving us help on the journey and a resurrection of new understandings of the great I am. And the hope and knowledge that death is not the end, but the start of something new. I am not the resurrection of your old life. I am the resurrection of so what must die in your lives today so you can have eternal life through Jesus? How must we trust to have resurrection in our lives rather than just being res resuscitated in the old? And are you being met by the great I am in a hard place by Jesus and being offered resurrection of life today? When Jesus said, I am, he pointed back to being the Messiah. When Jesus says, I am, to us, he is resurrecting our life to having the support. So are you willing to say, yes, I believe, as Martha did, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, who is coming to the world to resurrect my life and to have life and the same way of Lord, you are the resurrection and the life. And we thank you that you have resurrected us when we have said yes to you. 
And we pray that you will give us the life that you are calling us to. That you will give us the strength. You will give us the peace. And you will give us the life to share our faith with others. Lord, you did a great thing when you came back to life. And so we ask that you do a great thing in our lives every day. As is the way on a third Sunday, uh, in a moment we're going to sing again, Jesus be the centre. If anyone has uh, a story or a testimony that they want to share about being resurrected with Christ, you're welcome to come forward uh, during that song let me know and we will share before we pray. So let's sing together, Jesus be the centre.
And I said to Mark when I first came, um, well, I, you won't be seeing much of me because I ride on Sunday and I'm afraid um, um, that comes first. And then I found that actually I didn't want to ride on, on Sunday. I was back riding. <laughs> I didn't want to ride on a Sunday, actually I wanted to come to church. And um, that was my turning point, that was my resurrection. My life completely changed at that point. And I found that what was most important in my life was my relationship with God. And that meant um, sharing that with uh, fellow Christians and being part of the Gabriels. Let 
love prevail together with fair-mindedness, honesty and compassion. And as we consider these things, we pray for all political prisoners incarcerated on trumped-up charges of espionage, including Evan Gershevich. Please protect them, Lord. We pray for the sick and those suffering, Sue, Faye, Rita, Alec, and for their loved ones. We pray too for those caring for others night and day, exhausted and alone. Their suffering goes unnoticed, and we pray, Lord, that you will give them the resources and the help they need. We lift up our children to you, Lord. Please walk beside each and every one of them and protect them as they become adults, often in a hostile world. And as we bring our prayers into the coming week, help us to be kind to others, proclaiming Christ in all we do and say, Amen. <laughs> Thank you. 